So the article's called, I wrote a story every day for a month on live stream. You can't get simpler than that. I made the graphic myself from several of the um, thumbnails that I make for these stories that I do online and just kind of made a collage of them uh, to, to advertise the, the article. And it doesn't hurt for people to see my stories either. So we'll read this article. I'll discuss some of the things <clears throat> more in depth as we go. And um, then that'll be the last thing we do for stream today. All right. In a desperate attempt to keep myself relevant and draw undeserved attention to my writing, I keep coming up with gimmicks to try. This time I decided to write a story a day for the entire month of May while live streaming on Twitch. When I tell this story to other people, I frame it to make me look like an innovator, a thought leader, and worthy of admiration. Over the past year, Twitch has become a source of writing income for me. It is a live streaming platform I'm still developing as part of my author brand. Streaming every day for a month, writing a new story every day was a way to bring more attention to my channel. All right, I became affiliate back in January, and it was actually on a day I did a 24-hour writing challenge. I don't think I'm ever going to do that again. Um, and then I you know, gained some followers and subscribers and stuff as I was doing this this month of stories. Uh, so that was that was fine and also it was just fun to do all right the quirks of live streaming those of you who are familiar with twitch a lot of this will probably sound um uh, will be things you already know but there may be some details that uh might be new to you if um if you haven't thought about them before i guess all right i'm better at it now but the act of writing a story from scratch in front of an audience who can interact with you is unnatural to the fundamental nature of writing. It takes what is typically a solitary, introspective, creative process and turns it into a bit of a performance, and that's true. Um, in my case, I speak the words out loud as I'm typing the story on screen for everyone to see and hear. I'm telling the story as I'm writing it. I'm also stopping to answer questions or discuss ideas with those commenting in the running chat on stream. The name of the the nature of the video game centered streaming of Twitch is that people tend to pop in and out of the stream for short periods of viewing time. Others will lurk for longer. Some put the stream on in the background as they do other things. This leads to a phenomenon where spikes in viewer numbers and participation in chat will come along the longer a stream has been going. I found that many of these peak viewing moments came near or after the two hour mark. That's not inconsistent with the findings of many video game streamers. Working on one story for two hours or more while live streaming is a lot. I wanted to get those peaks in participation so I came up with a system of blocking the time and that's pretty much what I'm doing now. The first block is the new story written from scratch live. That takes the most time and depending on the length of the story can get me at or near the two hour mark. For the second block, I do the first edit of a story I wrote the previous day. I make and explain my changes as I read through the story live. The third block involves the reading of a story already edited and in its final draft form. Sometimes I have a fourth block where I read and share and, dis read, share and discuss an article or blog post of writing that I wrote or someone else wrote that I share with permission from the publisher of the piece. And uh, that's where I am now. I'm in that fourth block. These blocks get me to between two and three hours of streaming. I didn't today because um, I, I was working on flash fiction for a couple of them. Uh, it gets me into those high levels of interaction, increases my chances for follows, subscriptions, bits, gifted subs, and the other monetization elements of Twitch. I'm writing this, writing this article for other writers and probably other streamers as well. It also leads to more people checking out and buying the books I have conveniently linked in my about section below the stream. These blocks are ordered by greatest to lowest levels of required attention. The writing is the first and takes the most time. People who come in at the beginning to see that are often already following me and want to see the story unfold before their eyes. The editing is closer to a reading and goes quicker. The straight reading is much more familiar format to casual viewers. The article doesn't require following a narrative and people can come into that discussion anytime. The later a viewer drops in, the easier it is for them to join the stream in progress. So that's kind of my pattern and that's how I handle writing on stream. Streaming every day for a month allowed me to test the best days and times for interaction. I gave It gave me data to set a regular schedule going forward. It allowed me to streamline the mechanics of the streaming process of, of the streaming process and my presentation. All right. 
and I cut a little picture of myself uh, streaming. She she pled her belly, which was a pirate story. All right, the quirks of writing 31 stories in a row. Now this can apply um, broadly to people who are just writing and looking for something to kind of get their juices flowing, um, their creative juices flowing. And, um, I, and of course, if you, anybody's considering writing on stream, this is very helpful too, I think. So quirks of writing 31 stories in a row. Not every story was great. I'm sure many of you guessed this would be the case. This is also true if you write short stories slower over a longer period of time. Not every story delivers. I don't lose anything by writing those less stellar stories in the middle of ones that work better. Nothing stops me from trying that story idea again in a different form. So that's kind of how I face um, trying something I'm not sure about. Sometimes I surprise myself and it turns out great. Other times I um, see that I, I didn't deliver on that story, but I can rewrite the story or I can write, take the idea and write it in a different form later. More good stories than I expected. I don't claim that any of the 31 stories I wrote in May are the greatest stories ever written. I will say that a number of them were some of the best I personally have ever written though. Some of them were more daring and more surprising than stories I'd written before. I'm proud of more of them than I ever expected to be. Some of the stories I wrote I either would have never attempted or I would have given up on if it wasn't com if I wasn't committed to producing one a day. I'm proud of that too. So I have this board behind me that has like all the things I'm working on. Um, so I, I have kind of a, I do an electronic thing too, but I have the, the dry erase board here that kind of has, is divided into the sections of things that I'm doing and things I'm working on. Um, at the bottom corner of that board, I have um, story ideas. So they're just kind of sprawled everywhere. If anyone came in and saw this, they'd think I was insane. Uh, while I was, some of those story ideas have been up there for a long time, just titles or ideas. And as I'm doing 31 stories in a row, I had to dig deep into some of those ideas. So some of them I kind of been holding on to and didn't really attempt. I went ahead and had to do something with because I, I needed a new story for the next day. And those turned out to be some of my best stories for the month. The ones that I just had to snatch up that thing that's kind of been sitting and playing in the back of my mind for a while. And then I, um, then I, uh, wrote those stories and I think I'm better off for it. So I like the idea of rolling through those ideas quicker and, um, producing more and better stories. All right, next thing, my bad habits become more obvious. I had a ton of people stopping short and looking. Oh boy, were my characters looking a lot. The more aware I was of that kind of stuff, the better I got at catching it and correcting it in process. I also found myself defaulting to horror stories. Uh, nothing wrong with that, but I made a conscious choice to push some stories into other genres to change things up, to give my mind a chance to explore other things. And that's kind of where I ended up with that steampunk dragon story I read earlier. Uh, you burn through your ideas quickly, and it kind of goes back to what I was talking about there. I keep a list of potential story titles that catch my fancy. Sometimes I have a story idea already attached to the title. Other times I think the phrase is cool, and I wait for an idea to match up to it. That list got crossed off fast as I powered my way through the months, the writing, the months writing. I found myself looking and listening everywhere for new ideas. That's not necessarily a bad thing either, though. Preparation is important. My outlining for short stories is typically scant, but I found that if I could come up with names early, the, that helps a lot. Character names, street names, school names, town names, kingdom names, uh, and pirate ship names already listed out keep me from stopping in mid-sentence or using that's the same names over and over. Researching small details about the settings of stories in advance helped me frame the backstory on the fly. Knowing in advance what I was writing on a particular day or the day after gave me time to allow the ideas to develop in my head before I sat down and turned on the camera. All right, trusting yourself is more important. So I'm saying preparation is important, but trusting yourself is even more important. Every story starts with a blank page. You put down a title, claim it with your byline, set your paragraph indentions, and write that first sentence. That is true whether I'm streaming live or writing in private. I guess the key difference is there is no risk of anyone seeing me freeze up when no one is watching. I've written a lot of stories in my life, though. Those blank pages have successfully filled 
with complete stories over and over again. Preparation is important, but I have found that trusting myself to tell a story is even more important. That faith in myself pushes out fear, and I produce better stories in the end as a result. Um, editing is gold, and I think this is true for anyone. It doesn't even have to have anything to do with streaming. God bless the editors who have put up with my work over the years. I have gotten better at fixing more of the story and grammar issues myself before I subject a professional editor to my work. When I write 31 stories in as many days, self-editing is vitally important. The difference between the story working or not is in those adjustments after the first draft. If I'm willing to take on the work of editing and revising, then I can write the first draft without fear. I can get the story down without hesitation or second-guessing. Editing turns the first draft sprawl into something that connects and holds together. And often that's the big thing I'm doing, not just fixing typos, but looking for, okay, what works in this story and how do I connect all those working pieces and how, what do I need to get rid of that either doesn't work or needs to be reworked into something that fits uh, where the story is going. Quantity of practice reduces fear and clears the way for quality. And I think this is a key point. Um, if I hear any kind of um, criticism sometimes, it's that uh, writing a bunch of words doesn't necessarily produce quality. And that's where a lot of people uh, get hung up on word counts and it's a big argument between writers sometimes. Uh, but I think uh, quantity of practice is important. All right. We lean toward quality over quantity and with most things for good reason. In terms of final products, it's a good policy in life. Producing less work does not guarantee quality, though. The, you seldom hear the idea he's only written three stories his whole life, so they must be great. Quality practice is important, too. The repetition of skills that leads to proficiency comes from a quantity of practice. Not all stories I write that month were great. Some got better after editing, but not all were my best stuff. I do believe the ones that were my best stood on the backs of all those other stories that got me into a storytelling flow. They all sharpened my skills and improved execution of my creative work. All right. Um, I had fun and I shared the joy, that joy with others. Being a writer is my full-time career and I take it seriously. Uh, since 2013, when I quit teaching to write full-time, I've paid my bills and supported my family from money earned by writing. At times, that has been a tightrope walk of budgeting and creative financing. It also involves times of furious word counts and pieces <clears throat> that were sometimes just for the money because rent was due. The business side of writing is da as a daily concern even now. I'm developing Twitch as an author platform with monetization always in mind. Every other platform and mode of publication I consider, the financial calculation is always a big part of the decision. I had fun doing this, though. I enjoyed the viewers who expressed how much they enjoyed particular stories. I liked answering people's questions in the midst of writing and felt good when they told me they were inspired. I, it meant something to me. It energized me. Most of all, it was I was into the stories I was creating purely for the act of telling a story. There was joy in it, and I got the opportunity to share that in real time while engaging in an art form that is usually solitary. Ray Bradbury promoted the idea of writing a story a week because he said it was impossible to write 52 bad stories in a row. John Urbansek produced amazing stories with his Ink Stains project, where he wrote a story a short story every day for an extended period of time. In my opinion, he is one of the greatest short story writers ever. I can't help but believe all that practice was part of it. If you are considering an idea to shake things up and get you out of a rut, writing a story every day for a month is, is crazy, but it might work. If you want to get really crazy, consider doing it live while readers are watching. <clears throat> 